What's up, everybody? And welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video, where we cover nifty JavaScript topics that will come in handy when working on various JavaScript apps. And today's topic is going to be object destructuring. As a side note, in one of the previous videos, we did cover array destructuring. So if that is something that you're looking for, please check out the other videos in a playlist. So object destructuring. And similarly to array destructuring, I want you to think of object destructuring as a way for us to access or unpack variables from the object easier. Because we already know that if we have an object and then in the object we have a properties, if we would want to access those values, then of course, again, we would need to come up with a new variable name and then go with an object and then dot and then property name. And as you can see, the more nested is your object, because essentially siblings is an object itself. And then, of course, you just need to repeat the pattern where you go with object then property and then the actual property that you're looking for. And by the way, this example is not that much far fetched, because if you think about it, each and every time when you're getting a response from API, it is highly unlikely that it is going to be only one level deep. Essentially, when you're getting a response from the API, it is normally nested like so, where the properties are object itself. And then in order to access it, you need to do quite a bit of repetition. And this is, of course, where the object destructuring come into play. Because at the moment, yeah, everything looks nice. I can even console log. And of course, I will have my values. But there has to be a easier way how we can set this up. So I will comment this out just so you don't think that I am cheating. And you know what? This sucker can also go. And now, of course, let's take a look at how we can work with object destructuring. So first, we need to come up with a keyword. Again, const or let whatever is your preference. And then instead of the square brackets, like we did with arrays, since we're destructuring an object, we also need to have a curly braces. So that is going to be a difference where for the arrays, we would write something like this, correct? Or for object destructuring, we have the curly braces. And then we will assign this to whatever object we would want to destructure, which of course, in our case is Bob. And then I simply look for the properties that are in the object. And what properties I have, I have first, I have last, and I have, for example, city. And then if I console log this, so if I say first, then last, then city, of course, I can see in my console that I have Bob, Sanders, and Chicago. Okay, but you probably have a few questions where you're probably wondering, okay, but what happens if, for example, the property is not there? For example, if I'm looking for zip property, which clearly is not in my object. Well, let's test it out. So I have zip here, and then, of course, I console log zip. And as you can see, this is undefined. So whatever properties you're looking for, they must be in that object. If they're not an object, then you'll get back a value of undefined. And I also would like to mention that the order, unlike the array destructuring, is not important because we are accessing the properties. For example, I could get rid of first and say that I will get my last first and only then first. And as you can see, it doesn't change the fact that I'm still getting the proper value. Remember, in arrays, the order matter, because of course, we are getting the first item and second, and then whatever. However, with objects, it doesn't matter. And you're probably also wondering, well, what if I don't like the name? What if I would rather prefer a last name? Well, you would still need to access the same property that is in the object, but you can give it an alias. And the way we give the alias, we go with a colon and then whatever name you would like. So in this case, if you go with shake and bake, it is still going to work. So now, of course, if you go to console log and then if you say shake and bake, we will get our value of Sanders. Now, the one thing that you're noticing probably, though, is the error, correct? Because now once I gave it an alias, of course, I'm not accessing any more last. So that last doesn't exist as far as the variable that I'm setting up. Now, this is also one of the things that we can do if, for example, we would have already that variable of last. So imagine you have the variable of last, and then I'll write here 
some value. Of course, if you're destructuring and if you're not gonna have an alias, there's going to be an issue because we already know that we cannot have two variables with the same name. So if that is the case, then you still need to access the same property that is in the object. However, you could give it a nice alias. Now, of course, at the moment in my console log, I still have this some value because I did create this variable. But if that variable wouldn't exist, then just remember the moment you add this alias from that point on, you are dealing with an alias that you just created. And also you're probably wondering, okay, all of this is awesome, but what happens if the property is an object itself? Well, let's test it out. So I'll leave the zip just so you can see that it is going to be undefined, but then I'm going to go with a siblings. So since the siblings property is an object itself, we would need to set up a colon and then the curl braces. So this signals that, yeah, siblings is an object. So now, of course, from the object, we would need to pull out whichever property we would want. So in our case, this would be a sister. Can you give it an alias in here as well? Yeah, of course. So I'm going to go with sister and then I'll give it a alias of favorite and then sibling. So of course, the moment I have this setup, then in a console log, again, I'm not looking for the sister. I'm not looking for the siblings. I'm looking for favorite sibling. That's the variable that I just created. So we go with favorite and then sibling. And then, of course, I have in a console the value of Jane. So that would be a basic setup for object destructuring. Now, let's make things a little bit more interesting and see how we can use that when we pass an object into a function. And this is going to come in real handy in React because we know that in React, functions are components. And the way we pass the props, well, we set those props on the component. And then in order to access them, of course, we would need to access the props object where we're setting up the component. But in our case, we'll just use a simple function. But the idea is going to be exactly the same, where if I have a function and I'll call this print and then person. Now, in the function as a parameter, I'll pass in the person. So eventually, of course, this is going to be my Bob object. And if I'll console log and if I'll say person dot first, so essentially I'm assuming that there's going to be a property by the name of first. If I will invoke my function and if I'll pass in Bob, you'll notice that nicely in the console, we are going to have a value of Bob. So this is beautiful. But can we use the object destructuring to make our life a little bit easier? And of course, the answer is yes. Now, in this case, I think I will remove the console log. We don't need it here. And in this case, we have two options. Either we can set up the whole thing and set it equal to a person like we just did, or we can do the structuring right here in the parameters. So first, let me set up a separate line where I would go with const. And then again, whatever object I'm getting. So in this case, of course, that is going to be a person. And then I'm looking for the properties. Again, I'm looking for first, last city, and the sibling. So in this case, I'm not going to write all of them since the idea is going to be exactly the same. But if I go with first and last, you'll see that if we console log, then of course, we are going to have a Bob and senders. So let's type here. And then, of course, we have Bob Sanders. So that is one of the options which we just covered. And uh, please keep in mind that the rest of the rules also apply, meaning if you would want to get siblings, then you would need to add a colon and then the object. Or if you would want to get an alias, then add a colon and the new name. So all the same rules applies. However, what we can do is make the setup even easier. Where notice here where I'm passing in the person where I can say, you know what, I'm expecting an object. So why don't we do the structuring right here in the parameters? So I'm getting my object. And then from the object, I would right away want to get a first, last, and then city. And then like I said, since siblings is an object itself, I can just simply go for sister. And if I'll console log the sister, of course, my value will be Jane. And again, this is something that you'll see quite often 
in react land where we have components and then in order to access them we use the props object and then we have two flavors either we can destructure it in the function body like so then of course we'll still keep the name of the object that we're passing in meaning the parameter name or we can simply say all right i know i'm getting the object so why don't i destructure in the parameters all the properties that i'm looking for so that would be a basic setup how we can use a object destructuring in javascript